High Adventure. In tonight's story, we present Debt Collection. You'll get it blown off if you're not careful. I thought everyone had pulled out. Yeah, well, I am. I came back for you. Are you hurt? Oh, I've got a broken leg. I can't run. Now, yeah, well, hang on, mate. I'm coming across. Go back there. You get yourself killed. I'm coming across. Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Let's have a look at that leg of yours. Oh, pain is killing me. Yeah. Uh, looks nasty. Now, we've got to get you out of here and quick. How? A couple of the boys are waiting on the other side of the hill with an armoured car. And they can't bring it any closer. There's a flipping anti-tank gun at the end of the ridge. I can't move. I'll carry you. Don't get killed. Listen, mate. The enemy's going to start shelling here in a minute. If you stay, there won't be enough left for you to put in a paper bag. Now, come on. Oh, save yourself, Harry. I didn't come back here to listen to an argument. Now, get your arms around my shoulders. I'll lift you on my back. Oh, oh thanks, Harry. Now, get a good grip. Blimey, you should be on diet. You ready? Yes. Right. The one of the lads will give us a bit of cover in fire. Now, for crying in a bucket, don't let go. Oh, uh, 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 So after all this hard work, you owe me a favour. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget this, Harry. I, I can promise you that. Any time there's anything I can do for you, just say. <laughs> I'll think about it. Maybe one day I'll call in that IOU. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day... You can help me with something. What's the time? Nearly half past. Come on. Talk about being in the middle of nowhere. Listen. I don't hear anything, just the birds. Listen. There's a train coming. That's right. So what? <laughs> Today is just another train passing. Sometimes it's more than just another train. Meaning? Let's walk across to the fence and watch the nice puff puff, eh? <laughs> But what's all this about? What are you getting at? The train's an express, straight through from Gallows to London, and vice versa. On days like today, it's uh, just another train, like I said. And on other days? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. On other days, special days, it's full of lovely money. How much lovely money? <laughs> uh, around about a million quid. In cash? Yeah, in cash. Here's the fence. We'll see the train passing by in a minute. What's the time now? Mm, about a minute to half past. Uh, spot on time. <laughs> it always is. And that's where you come into the picture. What have I got to do with it? You owe me a favour, old son, and I'm calling it in. I see. A few years ago, it was me who saved your life. There you were, stuck in the desert with a broken leg and a panzer shooting at you. Then I pulled your irons out of the fire, didn't I, mate? You've got a medal for it. Ah, medal. You owe me a favour, mate. And you won't come out of it too badly, financially speaking. Are you planning a train robbery? That's right. I don't want anything to do with it. If it wasn't for me, you'd be dead. You'd be lying six foot under the western desert, all blown to bits. You owe me, mate, and you know it. Here comes the train. <laughs> Next time you see it, it'll be full. Business purposes. <laughs> oh, Owen, is, is that you? Yes, it's me. You're late. Sorry about that. 
Don't I get a hello kiss, is he? What? Oh, oh, yes. Well, that wasn't very romantic. Oh, I'm not feeling very romantic. Did you keep my supper? It's in the warmer. I'll fetch it. I'll have it in the kitchen. Is something wrong? You look like you've just come from a funeral. Oh, it's a long story. Well, I'm not going anywhere. Look, it's nothing. Forget it. Look, we've been married five months, and every evening you've come home right on time, full of beans, big smiles. Now all of a sudden you come home late, you look depressed, and you don't want to tell me what's wrong. Are you going to fetch my supper out the warmer or must I? Well, right, all right, I'll get it. Oh, oh, what a day. You're busy at the office, is that it? Oh, I wasn't there today. What? I took the day off. Huh? Thanks. Why did you take the day off? Where were you? I don't suppose I should tell you. Why not? We trust each other, right? Right. So trust me. And don't ask any questions. Oh, come on now, in. Are you in trouble? Yes. Big trouble. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, let's talk about it anyway. Uh, you promise not to repeat it? If that's what you want. Promise? Yes, whatever you say. I've got to talk to somebody about this or I'll blow my top. I'm listening. You remember I told you about a mate of mine in the army, Harry? Yeah, he saved your life? Yes. What about him? I was with him today. Oh? You haven't seen him for six or seven years. Well, I saw him today. He reckons I owe him a favour. He's right, of course. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be alive. So? He's planning to rob a train and I need my help. Rob a train? Keep your voice down. Let's not tell all the neighbours about it. What do you mean, rob a train? Well, Harry and some other blokes are going to rob a train. They need my help with some technical details. <laughs> what technical details? I'm not sure yet, but well, it's something to do with the automatic signalling system on the track. Harry knows I work with electronics, so he came to me. But you could get 20 years in prison. If it wasn't for Harry, I'd be dead. That doesn't mean he's got the right to turn you into a criminal. He stuck his neck out for me in the desert. He risked his life. But it still doesn't mean you've got to help him rob a train. Will you keep your voice down? Don't tell me you're going to go through with this. Well, I'll, I'll help him with the technical advice or whatever it is he needs. But I won't touch any of the money. Oh, so you won't touch any of the money. I suppose that makes everything all right, then. If you can't understand how I feel about this, then try to accept it, all right? Didn't you hear what I said about 20 years in jail? I'm sorry, Bridget. Look, I owe Harry a favour, a big favour. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. If you're sitting in prison, you won't be here, either. Oh, do you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. I think you've taken leave of your senses. Cheer up, mate. You're going to be rich. I told you I'm not interested in the money. Now get to the point as to why you need my help. Don't be so touchy. Now then, take a look at this map I got here. Yeah. Now we have here an idea of the automatic signalling system that covers the stretch of line we're interested in. Is it the area we visited the other day? Correct. I see. Now the trick involved is stopping the train so we can clear out the loop, which we expect will take a bit of time. But we don't want the railways people to know that the train isn't running on schedule. And how do you propose to do that? I've got a rough idea, but the details are your job. What details? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? When the train stops, it won't trigger signals further down the line. And somebody's going to twig that all is not rosy in the garden, you see. Now, you're going to think of some way to ensure that those troublesome signals continue to work. As though the train was still on schedule? As though the train was still on schedule. You've got the idea. That isn't going to be easy. If I thought it was easy, I wouldn't need your help, would I? I take it you're not in this caper by yourself. I mean, there are others involved. Of course there are others involved. You don't know who they are, and they don't know who you are. Right? Now, let's discuss the problem you're concerned with. An automatic signalling system is very complicated. I know. The design of the circuit and all its components must ensure that any failure from whatever cause will result in the signal being automatically set at danger. So? You want to be able to interfere with a certain group of signals, but individual signals are keyed in with the whole group, interlocked with the mechanism which controls the points. And what are you getting at? What I'm getting at is that if we start fooling around with the controls, we may cause a rail disaster somewhere else on the line. Oh. The basis of the signalling system we're dealing with here is the control of the indications displayed. 
through the agency of an electric current that flows Hold through. Hold your horses, mate. That's all your problem. You sort it out. Suppose there's a derailment or something worse somewhere on the track as a result of... See you... that it doesn't happen. How can I do that? I don't know the schedules for every train in the area, and even if I did, it doesn't mean that I could save them from... All the... I want you to do is ensure that nobody suspects our train isn't running on schedule. The first station it fails to reach is going to be noticed by people there. Never mind how we fiddle the electric signals. The only alternative is to introduce a delay on the line by feeding in another train. Then do that. It may cause an accident. I told you I can't control all the traffic in the area. All I can do is influence it. Well, then, influence it. That may cause a train accident somewhere. Well, then, try and make it a little accident. Oh, don't talk trite. We could bring about a disaster. Go away and think about it. You're a bright boy. You'll come up with an idea. Now, take this map with you. I'll try to get you a list of schedules. Obviously, you do not grasp what is involved here. All I know is there's a million quid at stake. We've got a perfect plan to stop the train and loot it. Now, you find a way to cover the fact that the train isn't running on time. It doesn't seem to bother you that people could be killed. If you do your job right, then nobody will be hurt. I can't guarantee it won't happen. Anyone would think you had to play with the old country's rail traffic. All we're interested in is a certain length of line. Look, isn't there some other way that you could go about this? The moment the money train is missed by the authorities, reaction will take place. The longer we delay that reaction, the more time we have to get away. Yes, but... Don't I... panic, mate. Just sit down and think carefully. You come up with an idea. I've got confidence in you. I knew you were a bright boy. That's why I saved your life. So, instead of being dead, <laughs> you can be useful. <laughs> To bed. In a while. Are you intending to sit here all night, They're boy? planning to carry out the job on Tuesday. Oh? What's the sudden rush for? Well, they've found out the train will be carrying more money than usual. About an extra 250000 Have you managed to come up with a method to... Do... I can divert a freight train onto the line, which will alert the systems control. Then they'll signal the money train that the line ahead is busy. Will that satisfy Harry and his merry men? Yes. It'll mean the money train has been delayed. Won't be expected on schedule. That's what Harry wants. And it gives him time to rob it. Yes, but there is a problem. What problem? Well, in order to get the freight train into position, I'll have to tamper with certain equipment. And I can't be sure that it won't also bungle the warning system. But it's possible the system's control won't know about the diversion. Yeah, there's a possibility, in which case they won't signal the money train. And the two trains could collide. You can't risk that. Harry's lot are prepared to risk it. The question is, are you... I'm trying to find a method to make the diversion fail-safe. Judging from the look on your face, I guess you haven't had much success. Well, let's say I'm 85% sure it'll work without an accident. So there's a 15% chance of a train collision. Yes. It isn't good enough. It'll have to be. I can't narrow it anymore. Not without doing something that would alert systems control to the interference. Oh, look, you need some sleep. Why don't you... Come Will to... you leave me alone? Oh, very well. That's the way you feel about it. Right, now then, Mrs. Reed, what can I do for you? Oh, it's Inspector Burns, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, please, sit down. Thank you. Now, what's the trouble? Well, I, I, I have some, some advanced information about a crime. Oh, that's very interesting. And I've come to you because there's somebody I want to protect. You mean the victim? Well, I'm not sure who is the victim. Well, I don't understand. Well, I know what the target is, and I know who's involved. At least, I know who two of the people are. One of them is... Well, he's been dragged into the crime for what I think are ridiculous reasons. Right, tell me about it. Well, it helped the person I want to, to protect. I mean, if I give you information, then explain the circumstances. Anything you tell me will be taken into careful consideration, yes. Well, you see, a few years ago, during the war, there was a man who saved another man's life. Yeah. And now this first man is using the event as a lever to get the cooperation of, of the second man. Yeah. Go on. The second man isn't a criminal. Far from it. 
But he has this peculiar idea that he's got to repay the debt, so to speak. Mm. Now, what sort of a crime's involved in? It's a train robbery. I see. Now, that is a very serious crime indeed. I know. That's why I'm here. Right, go on. Well, apart from the robbery, there's a possibility of a train accident, a collision. I see. You've got to stop it from happening. Well, I'm sure you will try to do that. Which train is it? An express between Gallagher and London. The one thereafter is on Tuesday. Uh, Apparently, it's going to be carrying a lot of money. Do you know how the robbery is going to take place? No, not really, but I have a rough idea. You said you know two of the men are. Yes. One of them's Harry Shide. Oh, rogue Harry. Yeah, I've come across him before. And who's the other one? My husband. Oh, I see. Until Harry contacted him, he was a perfectly respectable, hard-working man. But he's convinced that he owes Harry a debt. I think it's a sort of mental block. Oh, it's hard to explain. You say uh, Harry saved his life in the war, eh? Yes, in, in North Africa. They were in the Eighth Army together. Yeah. Look, I don't want my husband to throw his life away now, but he's useless trying to talk any sense to him. As I said, he's, he's got a mental block. All right. Now then, Mrs. Reeve, let's go over everything you know, slowly and carefully. I don't want my husband to go to jail. No, neither do I. But I'd like to see Rogue Harry on the inside. Saving your husband's life was probably the only respectable thing he's done in his whole existence. Just exactly what is it we're going to look for? There's a particular link in the automatic signalling system that I want to find. You reckon the link is on the track around here? According to my references, it's on the line about a mile or so from here. We can go on a bit and then park the car and walk to the track. Whatever you say, as long as the idea you have in mind works. Well, I've already told you that... What's worrying you isn't worrying me, mate. As long as you can keep the authorities quiet while we get the money, I'm as happy as a bird. If somehow another train gets onto the There's track There's about later, a 15% chance that the freight train from Roll Hill will run into the back of the money train at the point where you've stopped it. 15%? That's not much. It may not sound like much, but it could happen. Yeah, you want to start thinking positively, mate. I'll be such a pessimist. Stop the car near those trees ahead. It's just a short walk up the line. All right. Let's go. Uh. Yeah, a couple of days now and it'll all be over. <laughs> we'll have to climb down over that fence and go down the embankment. Right. You say this gadget you're looking for is nearby? Well, it should be. I'm not sure. That's one of the reasons why we're here. Are you going to jimmy it straight away? No. I'll have to do that shortly before you act against the Express. Yeah, well, we can finalise the times tonight. There's going to be a little meeting of the team. I'm not interested in meeting them. You are going to, mate. I'll meet with them and then you and I will have a little chat. Right? Here's the fence. All right, we can hop over it. You go first. All right. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have some rain. It's got pretty misty around here. Well, we needn't go down to the line yet. We can walk along the embankment. I'll tell you when I see what I'm looking for. Whatever you say, mate. When all this is over, you and I are square, right? I'll have paid you back, and that's it. Sure. (laughs) Your life was worth a million quid, don't you think? (laughs) Well, there's a bend in the line about a hundred yards ahead. I think the thing I'm after is around the corner, probably some distance away. Mm, Pity we couldn't get any closer with a car. We're going to get caught in the rain before long. You're wearing a raincoat? What are you complaining about? (laughs) After this lot, I'm going where the sun shines. (laughs) That's your business. (laughs) Well, don't walk so close to the edge of the embankment. Uh, It's quite firm. No, it isn't. (laughs) You're a proper old woman, aren't you? Come on, be a daredevil. <laughs> Walk on the edge of the embankment. Live dangerously. Get back here, the side's crumbling. Yeah, what? You'll lose your balance. Hey! Oh. Help me! I'm falling! Hurry! The side's giving way! Ah! For heaven's sake, he's rolling down the embankment. Idiot. Hurry! Oh, he's ended up on one of the lines. Looks like he's knocked himself out. Oh, that is marvellous. Now there's a train coming. Harry! Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, I better get down there and quick. Oh, the train's out of sight round the bend. It's not very far away, though. Oh, one mistake and I'll go rolling down the embankment myself. Harry! Oh, he's out like a light. I better slide down the rest of the way. Oh, I was rather fond of this sit. 
These trousers are going to be fit for rags after all this. Oh, now, blast! That's a nice graze I've given my hand. Not nearly there, two more feet to go. And then we can jump down on the line from here. Oof. Now then. Oh, now the train's going to be pounding through here in a few seconds. The driver won't see us in this mist. Right, let's get you off this line, Harry, old chap. There, let's get you clear. I'm laughing at you. Hey? Oh. Oh, I've just saved your life. Uh. We're even now, Harry. We're quits. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I don't owe you any more favours, do I? I'm free. I've paid you back. Yeah, wait a minute. There's a station about a mile or two north of here. I'll walk there and catch a train ride home. Hey? You can make your own way back to the car. No, you can't back out of the deal now. Oh, yes, I can. There isn't any more deal. Oh, yes, there is. Don't bother looking for your gun, Harry. It fell out of the holster while you were rolling down the embankment. Cheerio. Get back here. Don't Owen. ever come near me again. Next time, I'll go to the police. <laughs> Home, he told me what had happened. I see. He doesn't feel under any obligation to Harry Shard anymore. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing that could have happened. No, I'm not so sure of that. Why not? Well, I was hoping to catch Harry and his mates in the act, robbing the train. Perhaps they'll go ahead anyway, without my husband's help. No, I doubt it. Apart from anything else, Harry can't be sure your husband won't report to the police. Oh, I'd have dearly love to catch Harry red-handed. Oh, well, perhaps another Spectre, time. Yeah? Come over here to the window. Yeah, what's wrong? There's two men in a car park just just across the street. One of them looks like Harry. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's Harry, all right. I wonder. You wonder what? What time does your husband usually return from work? Well, he should be home in about ten minutes. He usually stops at a shop in Lowry Road to buy a newspaper. Right, get on the phone to that shop. See if you can speak to your husband. Well, I'll, I'll have to look up the number in the, in the well, phone. Go on, do that. Hurry, then. Oh, very well. If he hasn't arrived at the shop, keep the line open till he gets there. Tell him to stay in the shop. He is the number. Right, dial it. It seems that Harry and his mate are waiting outside to ambush and murder your husband. What? <laughs> I said I'd dearly love to catch Harry Shide at somebody red-handed. Now's my chance. Oh. oh, hello, Mr. Cooper. This is Bridget Reeves speaking. Is my husband there yet? He always gets his evening newspaper from you. Oh, I see. When he arrives, please call him to the phone. I'll wait. It's a very urgent matter. I'll go out the back way. Use one of the neighbours' phones. If we do this right, we can spring a trap on Harry and company. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Cooper. I'll hold on. He says my husband's just arrived. He's, he's calling him to the phone. Uh, tell him that under no circumstances he did leave the shop. Right. In any case, Harry won't suspect anything for another 10 or 15 minutes at least. Which you say is the usual time your husband arrives home. We may even be able to stretch it to 20 minutes. Is that how are you going to trap Harry? Don't you worry, I thought of something. Harry's such a great believer in payment of debts. Ah, right, let's see if we can make him pay a debt to society. He's been thieving since the day they let him out of detention after the war. He's in detention? Yes. But I thought he got a medal for saving Owen's life. Oh, he got a medal for that. As I said before, it was the only decent act of his life. Apart from that, he was bad news through and through. No, he's a strange one, that Harry Shide. Hello, Bridget. Oh, 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 and yes, now listen to me. You're to stay in the shop. Do you understand? Don't come home. Stay in the shop. Why? What's going on? I can't explain now. Just trust me. Everything's going to be all right. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal. <laughs> 